CataractCoach.com, the monocular patient mindset. You know, empathy and compassion are the key for these very nervous patients. Now, we're going to show you a video here, uncut, start to finish, so you can see this case. This patient's truly monocular. And the patient had multiple prior surgeries in the other eye, parental detachment, some problems thereafter, and has tysis in the other eye. So this is the only good eye. Now, the patient's waited a while to have cataract surgery, understandably, because every surgery, no matter how small, has some degree of risk. Now, this is the patient's maximum dilation. I wanted a little bit more than this. In the pre-op period, we did everything possible, including 10% phenylephrine, multiple times of uh, different an uh, agents to dilate the pupil, but it's still a little on the small side. Now, do you put in a Malugan ring or other pupil expansion device? If you want to, you can. Let's make the main incision here using a diamond, getting a nice, good, long tunnel length. I want an incision that's going to seal really well. I'm going to make it about 2.4 millimeters wide. There it is. And notice how I also like to nick those limbal vessels. By barely nicking the limbal vessels, I know I'm going to get better long-term sealing. Now here we're going in now just a couple of choppers to do a very light stretch. Now the patient obviously has a blue iris and we don't want to cause any invisible cosmetic damage here. So a little bit of a stretch is kind of all you need, not too much. Be careful to avoid touching that lens capsule. And now we can use Osher's trick of viscomedriasis to help temporarily expand that pupil. And so I can get this pupil out to about five millimeters, then I can get a beautiful rexus done. Now, of course, there are risks to any surgery. And probably the most frightening for any surgeon and for patients is losing vision. And with endophthalmitis, that can certainly happen. You know, nationwide numbers for endophthalmitis are usually one in two or 3,000 patients, somewhere in this range. And if you're the one patient, it doesn't matter what the odds are. It was you. So these patients have to absolutely want surgery. So one key point here is, in the pre-op time for the consultation, don't give any pressure for surgery. I tell the patients, you decide. If you're happy enough with your current vision, we don't have to do any cataract surgery. Just wait. If you enjoy your current vision, keep enjoying it. Do nothing. If, however, you feel very frustrated that you can't see well and you really wish you could see better out of your only eye, your good eye, then we should consider the cataract surgery. And then to give the patient very realistic expectations as to what to expect. Now here we're going to do a little hydra section. I want this nucleus out of the capsular bag. Well, why? I don't want to have any risks here of capsular damage. Patient has a nice, otherwise normal, healthy eye. I'll put a little extra viscoelastic here to protect the corneal endothelium. And now with this nucleus being held by the pupil, this patient also takes Flomax or Tamsulosin, so it's going to have a floppy iris issue. Well, here we don't have to worry about it. Now I can just buzz into the nucleus, chop it in half, and once I get two halves, these halves can be emulsified rather easily. So we're just going to take our time here. Now, also look at the draping. Draping is great. I also meet with the patients ahead of time with the anesthesiologist and kind of discuss what's going to happen. Make sure the patient can express any feelings and also to talk direct with the anesthesiologist. You may elect to do a little more sedation in these cases because these patients are so nervous. Sometimes when patients tell me, doctor, I'm really nervous, I tell them, it's okay, that's understandable. And I also make a joke and tell them, it's okay if you're nervous, but if I'm nervous, we're in trouble. But luckily, me, your surgeon, I'm good. I'm not nervous at all. We'll do a beautiful job for you. Let me tell you about our Cataract Coach website. You know, we have a podcast every week too. It's the top podcast in all of ophthalmology. I promise you'll love it. The sole purpose of the podcast is to make you a better, more successful ophthalmologist. It really is that good. An hour a week. It's available everywhere. Now, cortex removal here, as we're doing this, I'm expecting pretty much a routine case here. But let's just be careful here. I want to kind of slow things down. And I want to make sure that, you know, we're not getting any movement of the caps or bag, right? Just to be sure about everything. Now, the question here, too, is, well, would you, how, how carefully do you polish up this caps or bag? Well, you want to minimize the risk. Certainly get out as much of the lens material as you can. But let's not do any excessive things that may increase risk, even if it's just slightly. So again, cleaning up the caps or bag, that looks pretty good. Time to get our lens in. Now, what would you choose for a lens here? I really encourage you to choose a monofocal lens. I think the patients are going to be best with that. You've got maximum image quality. Patients here don't mind wearing glasses, certainly for reading. And then this patient was a little hyperopic for the entirety of life. And so we're aiming to give the patient post-op refraction of Plano with a monofocal lens. And the patient can wear glasses for up close work. In addition, to protect the good eye, the patient probably should wear protective glasses, even if they are 
Plano or without a prescription in them. Here comes the owl going in the capsule bag nice and easy. Going to get that dialed in here. And then these patients, let's watch them very carefully in the post-op period. And you got to encourage the patient, if there's any question, just call me. Here's my cell number. I want to know if you have any issues, you just call me. And I said in my entire career, I've never been upset for a patient for calling me. But I have been upset with a patient when I said, hey, why didn't you call me? I gave you my number. So if you have any issues, any questions, just call me. Chances are we can resolve it in a 30-second phone conversation. So here at the end, getting all that viscoelastic out, I don't want any high pressure spikes in the post-op period. In addition, this patient is just with topical anesthesia and a little intracameral, so this patient's going to be able to see right after the surgery. So in this case, we're not going to put a patch or anything else over the eye. In fact, my routine for my patients is no patch. I'll just seal up the incision here. I'll actually just put some sunglasses on the patient. We give patients sunglasses after surgery. Again, sealing up that incision, you can see very nice incision construction there. So hydrating the roof of that incision, going inside here, just sweeping around, making sure there's no retained lens loaf chips. Also make sure there's no retained viscoelastic and get the incision sealed up beautifully here. Now, you definitely want to have some prevention or prophylaxis for endophthalmitis. So here, I'm going to put in some triamcinolone, just a little bit to help quell post-op inflammation. Very small dose there. It's preservative-free. I'll put a tiny pinch of myostatin as well, which is a diluted 110 to bring down the pupil. And then here is an aliquot of preservative-free moxifloxacin. Get that in the anterior chamber. That looks good. Pressure of the eyes normal. That's a sponge soaked in tetracaine. And we're going to do a little LRI as well. Yes, why not treat that little bit of astigmatism? Give this patient a beautiful planar result. I'm happy to report this patient was a beautiful 2020 the next day and very, very happy about it. So again, be empathetic. Understand your patient's coming from. Be cautious at every step of the surgery. Do the absolute best you can. And of course, Tell the patient it's okay to be nervous and let's just do surgery when you're mentally ready for it and when you want it. I only want to cook dinner for someone who's hungry, right? Hey, remember, check out that podcast. Again, the top podcast in all of ophthalmology. I promise you will love it and you'll learn so much.